All right, Heaven. Heaven, uh, where are you from originally? Pasadena. Tell me about your family. Um, I'm an only child, and I had two great parents. Um, great parents. I was their life. And I grew up in the San Gabriel Valley. And just, I headed towards Hollywood, and that's how I ended up here when things kind of deflated, I guess you could say. How far did you go to school? 11th grade. Mm. Yeah. Where did things go off the, off the rails? When I was 13, my parents split, and I ended up out here for the first time. And yeah, it caused like trauma for me that kept repeating. So it's a very serious thing to, you know, the homeless thing is just, it's been the curse of my life. It was an ugly divorce or? Kind of, um, no, they were just, they weren't married. But um, because of the split, I ended up on the street at a young age. And it um, was like my biggest fear. And then it happened a couple more times. And it's like, it's like life is just, I don't know, it seems like a nightmare come true sometimes. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you ended up on the streets. Yeah. Yeah, they, I'm sorry, they split when I was 13 and I had a perfect life up until that. And um, then being on the street at such a young age was like traumatizing. And, um, and you stayed in school? I tried to, I tried to. And um, we would get it back together again, like me and my mom or me and my dad. And it would happen again, kind of. It happened, this is my fourth time being out here. Mm. But this is because of my own, you know, kind of four choices, I guess. But um, unlike other people, it's not due to drug use or anything. It's little, a lot of bad things like bad luck kind of just brought me to this. And then I was like, okay, well now let me just start drinking and using drugs. You know, it's not like, let me get high then lose everything like some people do. That sounds, yeah, I don't know. It's- um, but, but drugs are part of your they're life? They're just, yeah. They're just, it's a coping, a coping mechanism for me. It's just how I cope with, with out there. What you is know? your drug? I smoke crack mm. and I drink sometimes. And where do you stay now? I'm right now with a friend. But for the last year and a half, I've been outside with my dog. He's 12. It's been rough, just wherever we can stay. Like, excuse me. Staying, yeah. Staying in people's tents and things like that? Mm, no, like on the actual street. Like, like, um, because I don't like people and I don't trust people. So, like, it would just be just me and my dog. So like, like I would stay up as long as I could, like at a donut shop or at a 7-Eleven because I don't feel safe. And then I would find like a, an open car or truck and sleep in that for a couple hours and move on and just kind of things like that, just so that I could be alone and not in someone's tent or something. You know, I just, that's definitely not safe. And you think it's the parent, your parents splitting up that caused this? Um, well, the first time it was. But this last time around, um, yes, yeah, sorry, I kind of left a hole there. Um, this last time, I, uh, my father passed away in 2019, and he was my best friend, but I ended up with an inheritance. Um, so I thought I would just come to Hollywood and live my dream and get an apartment, and, and I was living my dream. But then I like fell in love, and that's where I really messed up because I started trusting this person, and um, I exhausted all of my money. And uh, I left my life in someone else's hand and kind of he just, when he was done with me, like that was it. He, he put me out here basically, my ex-boyfriend, John. So mm -hmm. yeah, he made sure I didn't have any money or any means, you know, it was, it was just kind of, I just, I trusted him with everything and I let him kind of be in charge of like, you know, if I'm gonna eat or not kind of thing, you know, that sounds dumb, but he was very manipulative and stuff. He did the thing where like, um, they call it, what they call it? financial it's some kind of abuse like with like dangling things like you know what I mean oh you don't have to do anything I'll take care of you and then little by little he was paying for everything I didn't even have money in my wallet and uh yeah I just I just left everything in someone else's hands which is the dumbest thing you could ever do you know yeah, trusting yeah I didn't even have my own person. job my own savings nothing it was yeah so when we broke up he made sure I had nothing like and put me out here basically because he was the maintenance guy where I lived. So yeah, he, he made sure that the staff all thought I was crazy and he knew I didn't have a dollar to my name and you know, he promised me uh, that he would take care of me and he literally did the opposite. So I was just kind of thrown out here with nothing at all. Like, yeah, pretty much, but he also got physical and there's a lot more to it, but yeah, so. How old are you now? I'm 40. And you have no kids? No. It's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I purposely didn't have kids, you know, because, <laughs> yeah, uh, 
Um, yeah, I feel like this isn't the best story. I feel like I'm probably not. Can we cut? Well, I mean, your, your crack addiction probably plays a large part in, in your troubles as well, right? Um, to be honest, it's not my biggest problem. Like, no. What do you think is your biggest problem? Um, not wanting to live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like literally suicide? It's dark. Like seriously, I wish I wasn't here, but I, my dog needs me. And um, so I'm just here for him, really. I mean, <laughs> if that sounds, yeah. Yeah. Have, have you seen doctors for your mental problems? Not this time, no. Because... No, <laughs> I'm kind of just, I'm just floundering. Like every day is just like foraging, you know, hunter-gatherer lifestyle and just, you know, just mostly for my dog. How do you make money? Um, I sell my body. Mm. And even that's not my biggest problem. It sucks, but, you know, yeah, it's definitely around here. It's not, it's not good for your, um, your ego. Or <laughs> no, it's a terrible lifestyle. <laughs> it's, yeah. Down here, especially. pretty awful. It can make you feel like shit, you know. But it kind of is what it is, you know. Yeah, but it's very dangerous. Is my concern? It's it's dangerous. There's a lot of really crazy people and ruthless people that have no problem hitting a woman, and uh, that's what I find appalling. That people are just okay with that. What's the worst thing you've seen since you've been here? I got beat up by a security guard twice. A man. That's the worst thing I've seen because it happened to me. Um, yeah. That's pretty fucking awful. I mean, I had a black eye. My first one in my life was by a man, and that was just outrageous. It was crazy. But, but you know? There are shelters for women. There are, but a lot of them don't take dogs or whatever, so that's my, I won't go anywhere without my dog because he needs me. So, like, sorry, my breathing's really shallow. I'm super nervous right now. Um, You're doing yeah. Fine. You're doing fine. What would you say heaven is your biggest regret? Living. I'm just kidding. Um, not not taking the um, initiative to just continue working and keeping a savings of my own, you know, and making sure that I could fall back on something, anything. Completely trusting my ex-boyfriend was really where I messed up because blindly I just trusted this man that I didn't really know hardly, who ended up to be married and stuff, which I didn't know. So his his whole his whole thing was just literally, I, it wasn't me. Like, I thought he loved me and would take care of me. And that was my fault, like, blindly trusting somebody, you know. He had a whole wife and, and child that, um, yeah, I didn't know about till the end. So, um, yeah, just not having my own self to fall back on. Because then, like, at the end, like, like trying to find a job so that I wouldn't lose my apartment stuff, it was, it was too late for that, you know. It didn't work out, so, yeah. Like, I should have seen it coming kind of thing. Right. Are you learning from your mistakes? No. I don't feel that I really have any mistakes. It's just survival, you know? <laughs> I'm not your typical person. You know, like, mistakes, what's, what do you consider a mistake? Trusting somebody that was clearly not worthy of their... Oh, yeah, that, that, that's it. I should have known better. Like, um, I guess trusting somebody, you know, that was, that's a regret for sure. <laughs> Yeah. And your mom is still alive? Yeah, but she has dementia, so mm. yes and no, yeah. you know, yeah. I understand that. She's a, she's a, yeah, yeah, she's a shell of herself, which sucks. It's, it's all just a weird time right now, you know? It's, it's like a nightmare, to be honest, but there are good days and bad days, you know? <laughs> have you considered going to a rehab or something like that? Yeah. There's one I want to go to, so I'm trying to get in there because it's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I don't do good in front of camera, so I'm super nervous. But yeah, there, I would like to change my life. At this point, it's just kind of like I'm in like limbo. But yeah, I would like to go back to school, do rehab, maybe find a good job and, what, what, and what start would, over. If you had a goal of something you'd like to see yourself doing in a few years, what would that be? Working and just being normal, you know, yeah. going to school, having bills to pay and... Yeah, driving a car, all the things that that make me not human anymore. Right. Since I don't have them, like, yeah. Yeah, but I can I can possibly help you find a place to go. It's very nice. We'll talk about it after we're done. Um, That'd be wonderful. <laughs> emotionally, what do you go through? It sounds like you're suicidal sometimes. I contemplate suicide much too often for like a regular 
normal person. I just don't talk about it because I don't want somebody to put me away, you know. Um, I joke about it, but it's it's on my mo- my mind a lot more than I feel like it should be. Um, but I'm Catholic. I won't act on it because I'm not saying that all Catholics don't do that, but it's something I take very seriously. Like, I don't want to go to hell. And if this is already hell, I don't want to see <laughs> the next level, <laughs> like level two. <laughs> Skid Row is hell, for sure. Um, just my life. It could be anywhere. It could be, but Skid Row doesn't help. You know, it's, it's, I've never seen anything like this place, you know? Yeah, it's horrible. It's pretty crazy. It's hard to believe it exists. It's, yeah, right? I'm like, do people drive by this and just like... <laughs> they, they, they drive by and just look at the freak show. What the, or they just don't see it. That's the part that is scary to know that... Well, it's a lot tamer now because so many people are in housing. So right. they're, they're hidden away. They're in, yeah. they're in apartment buildings all over the county of LA. Yeah. And that's good. That's good. Because I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm how can sure you look good. at... If you live in an apartment in Santa Monica or Pasadena or North right. Hollywood or somewhere, <laughs> and all of a sudden a crack addict or a fentanyl addict Right, is your neighbor? Is your next door neighbor, <laughs> and they need money tonight. Oh, yeah, no, your car okay. is parked out there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, that would be or kind just, of scary. Or just, or just bring drugs into the environment, which right. yeah. it wasn't. Because I've been on that side, too. So, you know, I haven't always been on drugs. Um, but you got to realize your neighbor could always be somebody who's um, crazy and means harm. You just never know. So, But yeah. Yeah, that sounds nice to be the person that, the other side of it, to be the person that's afraid of, like, that weirdo. I don't want to be that weirdo. So. <laughs> no, so sometimes I think it's almost better just to keep everyone contained in one small I think that's what this is, right? Com- is that what Skid Row is? I, I'm not sure what the answer is, but. I don't, that's what I feel like Skid Row is, because I'm like, um, that's what it looks like. You know, kind of just, it's like the Wild West, but I don't know. I'm new to it, and it's just very, it's like how, I don't know. How has this always been here? Has it always been here? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much always been here. For the last it's pretty, 30, pretty 40 awful. years. I mean, it, it, just the, the dirtiness of it is, to me, the part that's fucking gross. Like, <laughs> it's filthy. It's gross. Like, there's this... We all know, I don't have to talk about it, but it smells awful. And it's like, I, I mean, I'm not saying they should arrest people that just go potty on the street, but there's porta potties. Like, you don't have to poop on the... Well, I mean, the biggest, the biggest problem <laughs> is the mental illness problem, which Definitely. is pretty much across the board down here. Yeah. Everyone's dealing with it in one way or another. But there's nowhere to take these people, nowhere to put them. They're just putting them in. They're, they're, they're going to be your next door neighbor in, in, yeah. in Santa Monica or, or Culver City or Reseda or Duarte right. or whatever. Right. And you've got uh, a crazy drug addict. That with the drugs, living, the mental illness that's with your next the door drugs. Neighbor now. Is, that's so dangerous. And I don't think people know how to deal with that. But it makes the city look better. Right. It's, yes. That's what and looks good. The Olympics good. happen in a couple of years. And yeah, come <laughs> that's why everybody's LA. suddenly, right? <laughs> that's it'll, why everybody's look, in a hotel but me. Like, much, I can't get into a hotel. I'm like, it'll look, like, it'll yeah. appear much better. Yeah, it looks good. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I don't know if that's the I, right I think thing it's bad do. for the city in, as, a, as a whole right. to, to spread it all, all over everywhere. That's definitely true. Yeah, because, yeah. It just brings crime and all kinds of things people don't want is in, in their community right. into every, every community now. That's the word. I was just thinking the other day, I'm like, community. I don't think of that word when I think of Skid Row. I mean, is it a community? Not, not quite. Well, the, well the, the city, the state, the country doesn't really want to deal with all the mental health issues. So they, right. they just kind of let it, it's a shame. Let it happen and, and it's hide it as much as they can. Yeah. Rather, well, there was a guy rather than trying to fix the problem. Right. Excuse me. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, that's a problem of mine. But there was a guy yelling last night or two, all up and down each street for like a good hour yelling like not making sense you could tell he had something going on oh that happens every minute nobody checked on him um you know nobody drove up nobody asked if he was okay like and i kind of wanted to but knowing my luck i have bad luck no you don't want to do that especially uh, yeah. at night yeah especially so, but, as a female forget right. it. and i already have like i said i i meet every I weirdo mean, the cops won't even bo- bother. Right, that's exactly because I, I heard excuse me i heard the ambulance and some people driving by and like um at first i thought the fire department had stopped but it was somewhere else and, <laughs> right yeah, no, and he just kept going. I was like, is he okay? And um, he just finally just left, but... Now you're going to start seeing that all over the county. Right? How's that going to be in Arcadia? Or, like, where, where there's just an old people community? That would be mm-hmm. fucking scary. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but, yeah, I don't want to be that person. And if I don't leave here, like, soon, that's probably going to be me, like, in five years. Like, yeah. What's your biggest fear? 
Wow. Um, not being able to get away from somebody. Um, I've been lucky. Yeah. Pretty lucky. It's great that you're not pregnant or you don't have a child. No, yeah. yeah we'll see my, my dog. I almost said my son. My dog, Lord Byron. <coughs> Excuse me. He's like my child because he's this big and I carry him a lot because he has bad hips, but he's also old. And so when we do have to like get away, like let's say somebody gets weird and, or whatever the reason we have to leave, um, it's hard to like make sure that I'm carrying him or like, you know, we're running or he's on the leash and we've, we've had to run for our lives. And yeah, it's like having a child, you know, and I'm grateful I don't have a little one too to be like pulling along. It's, that's the scary part. You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm being kind of vague, but I've had some incidences where just people snap. And to be honest, as a woman, whether you, you give, give it up or don't, there's always going to be someone that's going to get all the way crazy with you. So we've had to do some um, odd things to be safe. Like, where you, it, it's a lot. It's, do, do, you, do you think your situation that you're currently in is, is, is due to your lack of self-worth? That's an interesting yeah, question. Because an attractive female of your, from your, with your background, wouldn't typically allow herself to get into this situation. No, um, I gave up on everything. So I'm just like, hey, if we eat today and, you know, eh, whatever, if we have somewhere to sleep with, <laughs> okay, you know, like I've given up. But yeah, no, normally, no. This is my biggest nightmare, um, to have nothing and to have to sell my body. Crack isn't even the big, crack's just whatever. Nicotine, crack, it's all the same to me. A habit is a habit. And um, one day I'm just going to go, okay, I don't want this anymore. But like, what I do for a living is pretty repulsive. And I could have a lot more money. I just don't apply myself because I don't fucking want to because <laughs> it's gross. Um, so yeah, I, I have some self-worth in there somewhere. Um, but not enough to be like, that's the thing. What, what, where would I go? Like, okay, I don't want this for me anymore. What am I going to do? Get up and just like, you know, walk off to like, I'm, I'm from Hollywood. I don't even have anybody over there that, yeah, I don't have anyone. I don't have any friends, so it's a lot. I'm in hell, and I meet random people like the gentleman that brought me here. Um, but I view everyone as a threat because the majority of the time they are. They want the one thing that I have, um, and if I don't just give it away, they'll probably just take it. So it's it's a nightmare for women, I think. When you were younger, or even now, do you, did you have dreams of a different life? Yeah, I wanted to be a pastry chef and then a pinup model. And <laughs> It'd be nice. Yeah, because I'm good at baking. But now I'm just like, like I said, if I get money for food and, and for crack, then it's a good day. <laughs> like, like I've been wanting donuts and McDonald's for like four days. <laughs> so yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. I want 40 <laughs> piece chicken nuggets and some donuts. And <laughs> well, I can help you with some of those. What, uh, have you ever, ever been in love before? Yeah, like twice. But um, yeah, that was nice. To me, that seems like such a far away, like, um, you know, like a dream. Yeah. I don't believe in that stuff anymore, you know? God, I'm so dark. I'm, yeah, I'm the dark side of like, some people are just out here having a great time. And I look at them like, fuck you. Like, I, I don't want everybody sad like me, but I just, I don't want to see that kind of happiness. Cause, well, I think they're just, in denial of the reality of their lives. Yeah, or you and get the people that good. come here to like, they have homes. They found a drug that really helps them numb. Right, or they come and just party here. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. It's a total thing, and I'm just like, I don't know, it's, it triggers me, you know, knowing they can go back to their homes and their families, and I'm just like. This is, the, this is a playground here, where anyone can do anything they want. I'm like, why and the cops won't even stop here, me. though? Like, <laughs> I don't know, you know, I try not to judge people, but, um, yeah, no. It is like the Wild West. It's very it really odd. Is. Yeah, sorry. I'm so boring. I'm sorry. No, you're not boring at all. Um, oh, whoops. No, you don't think so. Not at all. Yeah. So, what have, what have you learned about people, about men, from doing, from living on um, streets like this? <laughs> people don't really care. The majority of people, I don't like to generalize. 
But people don't really care what you're going through. They just want you to look pretty and be, be cute and happy to let, you know, do what they want as it suits them or fucking don't ask for shit. Don't be sad, don't cry, don't bitch. Don't be in pain and, and do what they say. Be at their beck and call, even if they're not fucking giving you anything because they might kill you. Or they like, they'll intimidate you so that you think they might hurt you so that you'll give in. And that's another thing, if you act scared or if they know the trauma you've endured, they'll use that against you even if they're actually not gonna hit you, they're gonna act like they're gonna hit you or whatever the fuck. And I don't fight men, so I have, you know, trouble with that, you know? Someone was chasing me last night and I don't run from anything. I'm not afraid of things, but like, to a point, you know? Excuse me, um, I'm a realist. I, I would not win if I'm trying to fight a man. But so I'm gonna run if he's getting too close to me and he means harm, I'm gonna run. So it's just, that's what I've learned. I learned that people are monsters and they don't have to be men, but the majority, they're either men or, or people that just want what you have. And, and, you know, even if I'm not trying to like, I don't know, I'll dress like a man to try. And it's, even when I dress like a boy, like it's like even harder, like it's even more, I get more attention. Um, Cause people are like, oh, is that a girl? Let's, you know, let's look harder. Let's get closer. And it's, it's weird. It sounds funny out loud, but is, yeah. Is it, is it hard for you to trust men now after you, what you've seen? Oh yeah. I don't trust anybody really. I mean, I, I if I'm in a situation like, like this is different, um, kind of, I mean, I'm just going to say it. You're white. I'm half white. I trust white people more than anyone else uh, because that's just how it is. Um, that's just where I'm at right now. It's based on your experiences. Mm hmm. And I mean, I've had white guys trip out on me, but the majority are other races. And uh, and also it's daytime and, you know, but I, if I'm in a situation with a man in an enclosed space, um, whatever happens is kind of my fault because I walked into that, you know, it's it's scary to always have to be on a high alert like that. But you have to put yourself in dangerous situations in order to survive and make money. All the time, yeah, all the time, yeah. <laughs> how, how do you think you have changed from from doing that for, for years now? Um, I feel like you would think that like I would lose all self-respect because of the thing and kind of to a point, but it's like, I've gotten a lot smarter. I'm surprised at my ability to, um, how I've been able to survive, like survival mode. I'm not a tomboy by like at all. I've never been a tomboy, but I mean, I've strapped my dog to me with like a scarf and like climbed shit and like gotten through windows and turned electricity on and the gas on and done weird shit that I've never thought I've had to do and, you know, not get caught and like lay low and just to break into places where I could stay warm and stuff. And um, I don't think a year ago that me knew how to do any of that. Like, but you didn't, you didn't come from that kind of No, no. I mean, I, your family yeah. was not like that? No, I was the only, only child and I'm a girl. And so I was very much, you know, I didn't climb trees. I, didn't, I don't think I knew how to climb a tree. Um, so now if I had to climb a tree to like get onto a roof, to get into an open window, to get into a closet where I could be safe or something. That's how I look at things now. I'm like, I look at everything as a ladder, like whereas before I wouldn't have even known to. So it's, I'm grateful for that. The instinct, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think it's, if you had to put a finger on what put you in this situation at 40 years old, is it your parents separating or is it? Oh no, and I'm sorry, mental, I'm kind of messed up with that. So like, um, when, the first time I was homeless, I was 13, it was because they separated. Um, and like my dad left me with my mom as he thought he should. And she, you know, she lost the apartment and whatever. And she went all crazy and like left me by myself. So I was out here at a young age and that that's what fucked me up, I think for my whole life. And then I started using drugs and I've always had a battle with um, crystal meth, you know, off and on. Mm. But then I was gonna be a nun in 2015 and I was celibate and I didn't touch drugs or booze for like eight years and I was fine. Really? So, I mean, that was totally, yeah. Um, so like, but the reason I'm out here this time is cause one person, I feel like I'm literally blaming my ex-boyfriend cause it was literally him. Like he did it. I didn't mention every single thing, but he literally did it. Like the trust thing, that was me. But I did everything I could to avoid this. I even sold my brand new car. I just, I just got ripped off by, it's a lot of, a series of really bad things happened, but it was all due to this one person. So like. Did you, you deciding to trust him? Yeah, and he, he went out of his way to fucking ruin my life, and I hate him, so. He's a jerk. And, you know, I, I see him sometimes, and um, his, his indifference is the part that's like, he's, he's not a human, you know? 
his eyes just, there's nothing there when he looks at me. And that's scary as fuck. Like, yeah, yeah, it's weird, you know? It's, it's, it's strange to encounter a, a heartless person. He's definitely, he exhibits signs of, from what I've read, like his signs of like psychopath, like, and I, I'm not the person to like use these terms and be like, oh, but f I read a lot. I, I research shit. And he's literally, he's just like, he has a lot of, you know, traits. Yeah, it's, it's very, and it makes sense now. It's very strange to encounter. It's there, so fucking weird because he's, he's there, a saint in everybody else's eyes. There's someone I interviewed who I remember reading a comment early on. Somebody said, no, oh, this, this is a psychopath. Look out. And I thought that was the strangest comment. Right. Because it's like, well, who are you to say? Is if you look it up, you know, they have their but, signs but, and traits. And right. That. But now that I've, now that years have gone by, I, I see that, that that comment was right on the money. Really? With, with this person. And you, you can't really tell either by no, looking you could, at I, could, them. I, I was so naive you know, and I couldn't but, see it. Yeah. But now I see it very clearly. And it's, it's the strangest personality to ever encounter. Right. They seem so nice. They seem so nice. And my mom always taught me, if, if somebody's too nice, don't trust them. And he was like way too nice. He was perfect. That's what got me to like like him in the beginning. Like he was. Well, I, th I think so what nice. the mistake a lot of us make is we we want to trust somebody, right? For whatever reason, we you know maybe yeah. you, maybe you think they're sweet or they're nice or you're attracted or whatever. Yeah. But you you, you think like oh no, this person's trustable and you've de you've decided that you've you've already imprinted that on their yeah on, on yeah. that on their personality. And, right. And the truth is they're <laughs> See, they're the one you shouldn't because that's what I did. I put all of my my trust in, and I, cause I, I still miss my father. We we're best friends. And so when I found this guy and I was like, he's like, I'll take care of you. I won't let anything happen to you. I clung to that. And little did I know I was clinging to the one person that was going to fuck everything up, probably knowing the whole time he was going to do that. Like, and, um, yeah, he was all I had. I ran to him and he was abusive and I, I kept running back to him and that's the worst feeling ever. Do you, so, do you, do you no longer trust your intuition? Yes and no. Cause after trauma, your mind gets all fucked up. Like, yeah, so no, because I, but at the same time, um, I'd rather not trust anybody and flee from everyone, excuse the microphone, or, because then, you know, that's kind of where I'm at, rather than uh, thinking I can trust anybody. So yeah. I kind of trust it, I mean, because it tells me don't trust anyone ever. You, you, you have to trust it with all the people you're interacting with. And that's the Just to do business with. Yeah, yeah, all of it. I hate it. I hate people. Um, <laughs> the majority of the time, you know, it's, it's been my biggest nightmare being out there with no privacy and just, um, I don't even know whose clothes these are. I'm just, they're mine now, but like, it's like, it's, it's the worst. You, like, it's like these, I think these are my shoes. Um, they are don't, you, are you doing things now that you just never dreamed you would ever be doing? Well, there's that. I mean, look, like if I see a hoodie that looks dry and it's been in the sun, I'm going to wear it because the sun is bleaching it. Like it's using its power to like, it's the best bleaching agent in the world. Like, you know, it makes things smell good. And so I'm going to put that hoodie on. Like <laughs> that's pretty fucking gross. <laughs> it's awful. Um, my last two pairs of Vans I found and they happen to fit. So <laughs> yeah, those are crazy. Like, but <laughs> survival, I guess, you know, yeah. but yeah, it's pretty nutty. It's, <laughs> well, let's see what we can do about maybe getting you back to a normal life. That would be amazing. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> Uh, Heaven, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Um, don't never trust your instinct. That little like voice, just always listen to it. Even if it's just saying this person's bad for you or, you know, don't stop going to school or hey, don't move there. or It's going to tell you because um, I really do feel like this is my ex-boyfriend's. He did this to me, right? Like, basically, that's where I'm at. And um, when I first met him, I heard in my mind, like, don't trust this guy. Don't, don't do it. You know, don't, don't trust him. And I was like, so I don't know. It could have maybe been avoided, but I'm just kind of also dumb. I'm a hopeless romantic and we were texting and it just seemed all nice and fun. So I just went for it. So yeah, yeah. always trust your instinct. Like, listen to that. All right. Yeah. Heaven, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. Let's see if we can do by getting you some help. That'd be amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. <laughs>